I've demonstrated on numerous occasions through my course that I'm able to work well both individually and within a group. A good example of working within a group would be during my digital video unit. We had to work together to make sure we planned each detail of our production stage of our music video, so that when it came to actual filming, everything ran smoothly and we could get good quality footage. In addition to this, later on that in the very same unit, I was able to develop my skills as an individual as I was tasked with editing all of our footage together that we had filmed as a group. Whilst editing, I had used our previous planning as well as my imagination to produce a final edit of our music video that was interesting and of a high quality, but also that fit the brief correctly. This was a great opportunity for the development of my personal editing skills, something that I had previously been aiming, for, aiming to improve. During the editing process, I definitely developed my skills quite dramatically by watching a large amount of tutorials on specific editing techniques, such as masking. I was already skilled in the basics of Premiere Pro, so that these tutorials really helped me improve from the basics and become even better at the software. In terms of working in a team, I think in future I would improve upon delegating work, as I did find at times that I was doing a larger proportion of the work and this is due to a lack of communication, which is something I would definitely want to change in the future. Throughout all of my units in my course, I have had to generate ideas for whatever final product I am creating. A great example of this would be my games design unit in year 12, in which I had to spend a long time developing the designs for my mobile app I decided to create. My design was a simple side-scrolling app basis that I then decided to alter to make unique. I changed the orientation and built the game narrative around it by making the game an inverted vertical side-scroller. This made the mechanics proposed in my game look as if they were falling, which is what I based the narrative of, of Uplifter upon. In addition to using actual mechanics to generate ideas, I researched other popular mobile apps at the same time, such as extremely popular game Flappy Bird. I looked into what made the app successful and used mind maps to help. I found that the simple design with positive colour tones were co common in successful apps, as well as the addictive and repeatable gameplay nature. When it comes to the I Am Design unit, however, I had to constantly improve my work as the design of my magazine had to be professional. To complete the unit successfully, I knew that the best thing to do was to make, take all criticisms that I received on board. I was good at this, as I did not mind what anyone has to say as long as it was constructive. This then allowed me to dramatically improve my work in terms of design and colour, so that my final magazine was at a level of quality that everyone seemed to appreciate. It also meant that I was able to majorly develop my own skills as I learned other techniques people thought would be more appropriate in the situations. Looking back at the problem solving I had to do, my digital video unit would have to be the best example. During the filming stage of this unit we had an issue of lost footage as there was a formatting problem with the SD card we had to use. This was quite a large setback at the time but we overcame it by eventually having to film all the footage again we had lost and then even improving upon some elements that we had got wrong originally. This shows how I adapted to the situation and managed to still create the finished piece with deadlines. One thing is to improve from looking back, however, would be the initial formatting of the SD card, obviously. I need to make sure next time that what I am converting is safe to do so, and at no risk of deleting footage. My ability to work to a deadline is strong, and this is clear from the fact that I have never missed a final deadline. The importance of a deadline cannot be stressed enough, as it allows you to keep organised and prioritised work. In addition to this, it also simulates a work scenario, as in a workspace such as a design agency, if you are unable to hit a deadline, you will not be hired. To be successful at each unit throughout my course, and reach my target of distinction star, distinction star, distinction star, or triple distinction star, my organisation throughout the course is key. For me, prioritising work is the best way to go about it. Firstly, making sure all of my work that was due, I knew about and then understood fully, as well as then knowing each individual deadline. With this information, I can then prioritise the work that is most difficult and how close the deadline is. This then allowed me to get all of the work done on time and to a higher standard. This also meant that any things that I had going on outside of school be it extra work such as the game I created or even extra curricular activities or just my social life meant that I could prioritise work around this and still get my work done on time and keep everything else I wanted to do going. Prioritising is definitely key to having a good and successful course. I think without it I probably would have failed my course. Punctuality. 
Simply put, I am extremely punctual, as is proven by my 100% attendance and the fact that I always turn up to a lesson on time. This would then be addition, in addition to meeting deadlines, as previously stated, and I don't believe that I can improve upon this, truly. My knowledge of software is broad, and this is due to the extensive, extensive skill practice I had in the first year of my course. This is in addition to the work I did outside of the course to further my knowledge, or even expand onto other softwares that are not part of the course. An example of this would be Unity, when I went outside of the course with a friend to spend 12 hours making a video game we created. The full list of my skilled softwares would be starting with Photoshop. Photoshop is a raster software in which I can create, again, raster images and edit photos, etc, etc. <laughs> On the other side of this, Illustrator, the second software, is a vector program. With vectors, it uses lines instead of pixels, so you can actually create a much more detailed image that doesn't lose quality as you increase the size of the image or alter it in any way. On the other side, as a, again part of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, InDesign would be something I used for my graphic narrative unit. This was extremely useful to me as it allowed me to set up each individual page of my comic book that I was creating and then from this I could put each all the assets I've created in both Photoshop and Illustrator and put them all together into the one file. InDesign was great for collating these assets but also to finish and print my final mag uh, comic book. After Effects on the other hand I've used on a couple of occasions. The, uh, my main occasion would be Motion Graphic Unit in my first year 12. After Effects is a video editing software as well as a visual effects software that you can build out without any original footage. It's great for animation, which is obviously motion graphics, so we, I created a 2D animation of which I used assets I created in Photoshop and used different tools such as masking layers and the puppet tool to animate it. Premiere Pro is a video editing software of which I've become extremely skilled in and it's probably the, the uh, software other than Maya and Photoshop that I'm most skilled in. I extremely love editing, which is one of the reasons I'm so good at it. But Premiere Pro is an excellent software that I've got to learn other than Final Cut Pro. Premiere Pro has some skills that can move over into Final Cut, so it is universal in that sense. However, Premiere Pro has a much better codec reception, so Final Cut Pro definitely is a great editing software, but Premiere Pro accepts the more common codec, H.264, which then allows me to edit videos in a much better compression file format. Maya is a completely different software to the previous ones, as I've, mem uh, as I've mentioned, as they were all in the Creative Cloud from Adobe. Maya is by Autodesk, a 3D modeling software and animation. I found this software extremely tricky as to start with, but once I got to know the software and uh, mod modeled more and more complicated products, I found that it's ex an extremely clever, uh, clever software, and if you use correctly, you can create some quite beautiful, beautiful end renders. Mudbox would be a second Autodesk product, of which I found it quite even more difficult to use at the beginning. I w this was an extracurricular software that I taught myself alongside a couple of other uh, other people who wanted to learn the software. Mudbox is definitely a tricky software, however it allows you to almost mould like clay uh, a 3D product on a computer. You can even then export this straight into Maya as they, the two softwares are linked through Autodesk. This allows you to create detailed kind of human uh, sculptures that might be difficult to create if you were just creating them from original cube in Maya. Then uh, further on from this, Unity is a great software for games creation. I'm passionate about games and took it upon myself to teach myself the softwares that I create them in. Unity as a games engine works wonders as I can import my Maya and Mudbox models that I've edited straight into the game along with some models I've put in there and use coding and animations within the engine that then allow me to create a game or a prototype game of which I did with a prototype I call Borleo. Uh, my final software that I definitely I taught myself to do works alongside Unity and it's called MonoDevelop. It is something that I would code in and can use multiple code languages within. 
I know JavaScript and uh, the basics of C++, so MonoDevelop was great for this, as it allowed me to code things like the character player movement within the game I created. This extensive list proves that I am highly skilled in a variety of softwares that enable me to create a range of work in different styles. Obvious ways to improve upon this would be to learn these softwares in greater detail, or even learn additional softwares to broaden my horizons further. One particular goal of mine is to learn additional coding languages from JavaScript and learn them to almost fluent ability for a future in the games industry.